Hey folks, when I browse the internet, anything shotgun related and see Benelli M4 topics, I see a lot of comments that talk about so-called California compliant collapsible stocks. I'm also getting a lot of phone calls about whether uh, having a pinned or a fixed collapsible stock in California is legal. And it's mainly the phone calls that are leading me to the forums because people call me up and they ask me a question. Hey, I saw it over here and I go and read it and see what people are saying. And I've got some definite thoughts on this subject. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Let's get started right now. Hey there, I'm Todd. I'm the owner and operator of Freedom Fighter Tactical. Been in business since 2008 and the leader in Benelli M series shotgun aftermarket parts and accessories to trick out and make your gun nicer, make it legal all that good stuff when you buy the gun out of the box it's a beautiful thing but there's lots that you can do to it it's kind of like buying a porsche right a lot of guys buy porsches and then they go and trick it out with different wheels and different exhaust and right out of the gate the porsche is beautiful and ready to go and they still want to do something nicer with it that's what the crowd that i serve does they want to make their gun as awesome as it can be and that's what we do here at freedom fighter tactical now like i said over the last year or two i've been hearing a lot about this so-called california compliant collapsible stock i don't know who started that uh, but i think it's a big disservice to the community and we're going to talk about that i think what's happened too is is that uh, somehow or another benelli is selling the uh, m4 shotgun with a well they sell it in two different configurations from what i've heard of i i've seen the 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 configuration where it has a one position recoil tube so the stock can't uh, it, i mean it can shrink but what happens is, is when you turn the stock to move it from the full extension to the next position you can't lock it back into place so it's kind of crooked and loose and doesn't work right. So it's basically for all intents and purposes, it's a one position stock, okay? But it does what? When you move it back and forth, what's that doing? It's collapsing, right? Um, and then the other configuration I've heard about is a pin. I've heard, and I'm actually trying to get my hands on this. I haven't been able to secure, source one yet, but supposedly there's a version out there that they're selling within California. And I think they're selling them nationwide in both of these configurations, but in California, there's a pin that, and I don't even know what it looks like. I haven't seen a picture of it. I, I haven't even seen one yet. And I'm trying, like I said, I'm trying to source one. Um, but, uh, and feel free if you're watching this video, if you want to send pictures to freedomfightertactical at gmail.com of your pin, I'd love to see what it looks like and what's going on. But it's my understanding that Benelli is selling this gun with the collapsible stock on there. And the, uh, it has a three position, it must have a three position recoil too, because they're using a pin to hold it in place at the full extended position. And it's my understanding from clients who I've helped that you can remove the pin, collapse it to a different position and put the pin back. And we're gonna talk about that in this video. But first, before we dig into that, again, I'm gonna be creating a lot of videos here on YouTube. I've got a lot of plans and, and video content uh, queued up. If you look behind me, there's a camera rig. Uh, it's on this side. It's a camera rig with all sorts of equipment on it uh, with a camera facing me and a camera facing straight down so that I can take uh, shots of what I'm working on while I'm working on it and talk to you. I might even start doing live videos at some point. So if that's the kind of content that you're looking for, you're a strong Benelli shotgun enthusiast, whether it's the M1, M2, M3, or M4, this is the channel that you want to subscribe to. So again, be sure to hit the button down below to subscribe and hit the bell. A thumbs up would be great. If you like the video, hey, if you disagree with my opinion, don't give me a thumbs down. That's not a reason for a thumbs down. You give a thumbs down to the DOJ. Go to their YouTube channel if they have one and give them a thumbs down. Give me a thumbs up if you like this kind of video content and um, you appreciate the fact that I'm trying to inform you guys and give you some stuff to think about. So thumbs up or greatly appreciated in addition to subscribing to the channel. Now, let's get right into the meat of what I'm talking about. And I'm gonna demonstrate a little bit about what we're contending with. So the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is I wanna explain the uh, locking, the full extension, uh, the locking position. So what we've got is a recoil tube. This is a recoil tube and it has notches in it. This is a three position recoil tube and it has notches. And if it only has one notch, let's see, it goes into the gun. This is this is out of the, coming out of the gun and it's coming down. And so you've got the pistol grip that slides over top of it and you've got the stock itself 
that also goes over top of it. Okay. Sorry, I'm not looking at the camera. I'm looking at the screen to make sure that I'm in frame. So if you buy this gun in California or anywhere else, and you've got a one position stock, which is going to be the fully extended position, what that's going to do is prevent the stock from really being useful unless it's at the full extension. If you were to hit the button on the side of it to collapse it, it's going to, you're going to be required to turn it to get it off of the uh, notch and push it down, but there's not another place for the notch to turn it straight up. So effectively, uh, it's ineffective, right? It, uh, it only is going to work for you. Nobody's going to want to shoot the, shoot the gun with the stock canted against their shoulder. They want it kind of straight up and down so it fits in the pocket. So if it's sideways or, or canted, it's going to be uncomfortable and not feel right. And plus, if it's not locked in place, it has the potential to move about. So people think that because it only is operative in one position, that it's not considered a collapsible stock under California law. Well, here's the thing. The fact that you can push the button and turn it and push it in, what'd you just do? Did it collapse? I mean, convince me I'm wrong here. It just collapsed. Seems to me a violation of the law, even if it's a one position recoil tube in the full extended position. You can actually turn it and collapse it. I don't think the law makes any room for, oh, it's not locked into place somewhere else. I don't think there's anything written in the law that says if the stock is canted, then uh, some, or, you know, it's, it, and, it, and it's not truly locked into place and it's somewhat ineffective that it's not collapsible now. If it collapsed, it collapsed, right? Convince me I'm wrong. Leave a comment down below if you think that's incorrect, but it collapsed. It just, you just effectively collapsed it a few inches, right? So that's the fixed recoil tube, the one position recoil tube, which a lot of you guys are getting out there. A lot of people, and in fact, nationwide, a lot of people buy this gun and it has a one position tube on it, which is the fully extended position. And it always freaks people out. A lot of new customers of Benelli do not know uh, to check to see which uh, recoil tube they have received or they're about to receive when they purchase a particular firearm. People want the three position recoil tube. They don't want the one position. But in California, people think that the one position is somehow compliant, but it just collapsed, okay? So if it were such that you had a recoil tube that prevented you from turning the stock and pushing it inward, then I would think, okay, that might work that might be a truly California compliant collapsible stock. I don't know for sure. I haven't checked with the DOJ and it's something that I would want to check with the DOJ. But the fact that you can actually turn it and collapse it to some degree, it just collapsed. So, you know, that's all that's going to matter, folks. I know how judges think. I used to work in a courtroom, <laughs> okay? Um, so I, I know what they're looking for. And if it collapses, then it collapses. It's as simple as that. You can try to argue all day long that it's not an effective collapse or that it doesn't lock into place when you collapse it. In fact, that's an admission right there. If you said, were to say to a judge, it doesn't lock into place when I collapse it, then you've just admitted that you collapsed it, which is defined in the law as what makes it illegal. It's a collapsible stock, okay? So uh, it's kind of like uh, people that go to traffic court and they go in there and they bang their fist on there and they say, I wasn't speeding, I wasn't speeding. The speed limit was 65 and they were going 75. I wasn't speeding, I wasn't speeding. And um, when it comes down to the word of the officer versus the, uh, the defendant, then the defendant always says, well, I was going the speed of traffic. Well, what was the speed of traffic? 75. It's unsafe to go slower than 75. Well, you just admitted it. You went the speed of traffic. If the speed of traffic, and you admit this, you, had, you were going speed of traffic and the speed of traffic was 75, you've just admitted it. It's amazing. I used to actually clerk in a, in a, and do traffic uh, when I was coming up in law. And um, people admit to speeding all the time. And then they're befuddled when the judge or the commissioner, whoever it is, slams their gavel down on the, on the, on the bench and says, guilty. And they're like, what? No, you just admitted it. You admitted you're going the speed of traffic and you admitted the speed of traffic was going 75. That's an admission of speeding, guilty, case, case over, it's over. Same thing with this. Uh, your, your Honor, it doesn't, it's not effective when it collapses. It's not effective. It doesn't lock into place when you collapse it. You just admitted it collapsed. 
I, I mean, convince me otherwise. Okay, so let's get off the recoil tube. That's, that's the one configuration. Uh, again, if you had a recoil tube that didn't collapse whatsoever and just was locked in the outer position and that's all it ever did, that arguably is a California compliant collapsible stock. Okay, I'm not for sure. I'd have to check with the DOJ. Okay, now this pin business, and I'm, so, I'm sorry I don't have, uh, I don't have a, um, a sample to show you and I'm talking off some of speculation because I've been told that it, the, the stock is pinned so it can't adjust at all. But I'm also told that you can remove the pin and adjust the stock. So I've had clients tell me they've removed the pin, they've collapsed the stock to the smallest position, and then they've put the pin back in place. They've also told me they've taken the pin out, collapsed it to the middle position, and then put the pin back in place. What'd you just do when you removed the pin and you adjusted the stock? Did you collapse it? Okay. There's absolutely nothing in the law that says that uh, it, it has to be pinned um, in place to make it compliant. There's absolutely nothing. Remember the, in California, for those of you who know, remember the magazine ban on, um, on rifles? So they said that a, a magazine can only detach if it's locked in place by a device that requires a tool to remove it. And somebody came up with the bullet button. But the law gave us an out, right? The law said, yes, you can have detachable magazines, but the magazines have to require some sort of a contraption, a device, a fixture that requires a tool to remove before detaching the magazine. They didn't want people to rip the magazine out and shove a new one back in. They wanted people to have to take the time. And I think the legislators thought, okay, they're going to have to pick a tool like a Phillips head screw uh, and a Phillips head screwdriver. They're going to have to pick a flathead screw and a flathead screwdriver. They're going to have to pick some sort of key lock. No, clever people out there decided, you know what? The tool wasn't defined. We're going to get a, we're going to make it so the tool can be the tip of a bullet. And the button's going to be such that you can take the tip of the bullet, shove it into this little hole, and it lets the magazine detach. And then you can shove another one back in. And the law didn't require that you had to have a tool to, to add a magazine. It was to remove the magazine. So the next magazine could slide right in and the bullet button would, uh, would work its job and lock the next one in place. There's no such thing anywhere. I've scoured California, the assault weapons ban, to see if there's any such out for the collapsible stock, such that uh, collapsible stocks are prohibited. However, if it's locked into place, it's allowed. And if it's locked into place and you can remove the pin and move it and lock it back into place, that it's allowed, okay? That makes no sense to me. In fact, you see this button on the side? That, in effect, is the same thing as a pin, okay? Except you're not removing it, you're, you're depressing it. But when that thing is snapped into place and this stock is snapped into place, it doesn't move. If you push that, then you can turn it and move it to the next spot and turn it back. And then it snaps back into place. Okay. So this effectively does the same thing. It just makes the job a little easier. Removing the pin might require a tool. It might require a little more time. This is simply depressing something, but it, it, when, when this is working, this is locked into each of the positions. So this is illegal under California law. We know that. So why would a pin all of a sudden be illegal? If there's no out, you remove the pin, you shrink it, you collapse it, and you put the pin back. That's a collapsible stock, okay? You take the pin out again, you shrink it a little more, you just collapse it again. You take the pin out, you've just elongated it, right? Or extended it it's still a collapsible stock with the pin in place. Looks to me like it's illegal, folks. Looks to me like there's, that's not a California compliant shotgun. There's no out in the law that says anything about a tool. There's no, nothing in the law that says that it can be pinned and the pin can be removed and adjusted. There's nothing. A collapsible stock by definition is a felony in California. If you can collapse this stock in any fashion, it's collapsible. I've also heard of people adding their own hardware and making it so it's like a bullet button where you, you actually have to, you know, uh, unlock it to move it to another position and then lock it back. That's, a, that's the same thing. Okay. It's not California compliant. Now, is it possible I'm wrong? Certainly. Is it possible that my interpret, I, I can tell you this, my interpretation in this video, I do not expect it to be popular. People want this stock in California, 
Okay. It's a ridiculous law. I sympathize and I agree. It's stupid, but it is indeed the law and it is indeed a felony and it is indeed, you know, part of the assault weapons ban. And it is indeed a law and a felony in the state that hates guns more than any other state in the nation and is constantly doing things to penalize us and to take our gun rights away. You think that having what you think and this internet folklore, California compliant crap is going to save you when these prosecutors, somebody sees you somewhere, you use the gun in a range and somebody sees it or you use it in a defense situation and they decide to sniff over your gun. You think they're going to somehow believe this California compliant crap? You have another thing coming. I'm telling you right now, as somebody who has worked in law, and somebody who's worked in the prosecutor's office and somebody who spent good time in a courtroom and somebody who knows these kinds of people. Okay. They're not going to see this as California compliant. So I'm telling you folks, risk it. If you'd like, I've, I've, anybody that calls me, I tell them the same thing. Look at, I don't want to strike the, when it comes to 922 R for 13 years, I've been answering the phone and talking to people about it. And I've told them, here's my advice. Follow the letter of the law. I know it's dumb. I know it's vague. I know it's ambiguous. I know it's probably very difficult to prosecute. People like to say, well, do you know anyone that's been prosecuted? No, I don't know anyone's been prosecuted. Do you? Have you stopped to do the homework to find out if anyone's been prosecuted? I'm not going to do that. I don't care. The law is out there. I don't give a rat's ass if someone's been prosecuted or not. The fact is the law is out there. Okay. But I know it's weak. I know it's ambiguous. I know that the likelihood of a successful prosecution is probably pretty slim when it comes to this particular gun. But I also know that it's a lot of trouble. And um, I also know that you can have compliance for like 300 bucks and your first hour in an attorney's chair is gonna be 500 bucks. The first hour just to introduce yourself and to explain a little bit about what happens is gonna cost you 500 bucks right there in that leather chair in that nice office with all the books and the wood trim. That's how they pay for that stuff. And the Xenia suits and ties. That's how they pay for that stuff, right? And I bet it's gonna be more than 500 bucks for your first hour. I'm being a little bit conservative on that price. But I still, I don't sound alarm bells when it comes to the federal 922R all over the country. I mean, you either comply or you don't. It's, it, I mean, it is what it is. But the California assault weapons ban is different, okay? That's a serious deal. And they've suffered a lot of losses when it comes to that law being unconstitutional and various things. And they're chomping, they're, in my opinion, the prosecutors in this state are chomping at the bit to come after people when they can. You know, think of the McCluskeys in St. Louis. Their guns were confiscated and probably analyzed by everyone that has anything to do with figuring out how to prosecute these people. Imagine if you're in California and the riots are in your yard and you go stand out there with your shotgun and it's got the California compliant collapsible stock on there. Where do you think that's going to get you? Leave comments down below. Let me know your thoughts. Don't Please don't flame me. I'm trying to help you guys out. I don't want my clients going to jail. I don't want my clients spending $500 on, on uh, uh, legal fees per hour. I don't want you guys in trouble, okay? I believe in a belt and suspenders approach. You're welcome to contact a gun attorney in the state. Uh, Chuck, I think it's Chuck Michelle. Uh, Bruce Kolodny are the two I know here in Southern California. I don't actually know them personally, but I know they're out there. I mean, call them up and see if you can get anything definitive. I'm not going to call them up because I don't care. I've come to my conclusion as it is. And if I'm proven wrong, I'm happy to do another video and tell people, hey, this is the way it is. But, um, you know, I'm able to think for myself. I've been trained to think like those guys because I am a, you know, I am licensed as an attorney in California as well. And I've been in the courts and I've done that stuff. So I don't need to pay to have them give me answers. If you want, you're welcome to do that. But, uh, and, and I don't have anything to sell you to make your gun California compliant. So I really have nothing to gain out of this. It's just merely kind of a public service. I don't like seeing people uh, on the internet and calling me up telling me they're doing this California compliance stuff because I think it's going to bite them in the ass. Folks, uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Click the like button. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. Um, head over to Freedom Fighter Tactical for all the Benelli accessories that you could ever dream of. Get on the email list over there. We are an authorized Benelli dealer and we get all sorts of goodies from them from time to time. And uh, I've got everything that you could possibly desire over almost everything. Some things are out of stock a lot, but I do the best I can for you guys. Phone numbers on the video on the website. Email me freedomfightertactical at gmail.com. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care, folks, and have a great day.